Today, I am going to explain your experiment number 5 of physics 2, the temperature dependence of a resistance. That means from the title itself you have the meaning. That means the resistance entirely depends on the temperature and vice versa. Whenever you increase the temperature, the resistance get increased. So what is our title, what is our objective of this experiment? To demonstrate that the resistance of a light bulb filament is non-linear. So today we are going to use one bulb. So that bulb is this one. You can just have a look here. We are going to use this bulb and inside the bulb you can see the filament. Inside the bulb you can see the filament, the thin filament is made up of tungsten material. Whenever you turn on this you can see inside. You can just see here inside the bulb there is one filament. Am I right? Clear? So this filament nature is non-linear behavior. Clear? We are going to demonstrate that your bulb filament is non-linear and by using this we are going to find what temperature it is operating. So for this experiment we are going to use two equation. This equation V which is equal to IR for our table part. By using this equation we are going to calculate the resistance. How you can arrange? Therefore my resistance which is equal to V over I. Clear? We have to use this equation in the table. But for the data analysis part we are going to use this equation. R which is equal to R naught 1 plus alpha multiplied by R minus R naught. My dear, if you want to write it easy, you can use our thermal expansion, linear thermal expansion. Do you remember that? In chapter number 18, we use this equation. Delta L, which is equal to alpha L naught delta T. Alright? So, here you can use this. Wherever you have L, replace this L with resistance. So, if you replace, what will, get, what will happen? Or delta R, which is equal to alpha, this L naught becomes R naught and this becomes delta t. Now what is delta r? r minus r naught alpha r naught this delta t is nothing but t minus t naught. So that equation is this one. So here they give the equation in terms of resistance but here I just wrote the equation in terms of change in resistance. Now what is our objective? By using this equation we are going to find the value of this temperature. So you have to rearrange. Inshallah once I explain I will tell you how to rearrange. Understand? So we are going to use this equation for finding the final temperature. So the room temperature will be given by your teacher. By using this, you have to find the final temperature. R and R naught value you have to get from the graph. Today the graph is a little bit different. So I will explain after I give the explanation from the table. Okay? So now, if you just saw the circuit diagram, we are going to use a battery. We are going to use one ammeter, we are going to use one voltmeter and then we are going to use the bulb because I told you inside the bulb there is the filament and this filament has different resistance value. That's why we are using this arrow mark. Arrow tells you about different values for the resistance, variable resistance. Clear? So this is our schematic diagram. Now I will show you what is what are the apparatus today we are going to use. This is your battery. And we are going to use the bulb, which is nothing but our variable resistance here inside the resistance. We are inside the filament, the filament will have different resistance value. And then we are going to use two multimeter. The first multimeter is used to measure the current. You can see it's measuring A. A stands for ampere. And this multimeter is used to measure the voltage V. Clear? But anyhow, if you just see the monitor of this power supply, here itself you have the voltage, voltmeter and ammeter. But this is only one digit or two digit accuracy. But if you are using the multimeter, it will give more information, more clear, more perfect answer. Understand? So if you just see the table, this is our table for today's experiment. We have two tables. That means for this experiment, you have to draw two graphs. So if you just see the first table, the first table is for low voltage range. So if you just see the voltage, the voltage changes in terms of small level, 0.2. 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1. So that means here we are going to give small level voltage for finding the respective current. If you set 0 0.2 volt, what should be the current? If you set 0 0.4 volt, what should be the current? 0 0.6 volt, what should be the current? 0 0.8, what should likewise you have to finish the current. Once you get the information about the current, you can easily find the resistance by using this formula. R which is equal to V over I. 
So you can see the second table. Second table is also exactly the same, but you can see the range of the voltage. Here we are just changing the voltage in terms of one. One, two, four, six, that means it's a big number. So you are going to give a big voltage. That means the range of the voltage is very high. So for this high voltage, what should be the current? So these two things we are going to find by using the first table, we are going to get the value of R0. By using the second table, we are going to get the value of R from the graph. Clear? Now I'm going to explain two readings for each table. I'm going to take one reading for the first table. I'm going to show you the reading for the second table. And after that, I will explain the graphical part. Understand? So now what I'm going to do, you can see here, we have 0 0.2 volts. So I'm going to find the current for this 0 0.2. So you can just see the battery. We have two monitors, two screen, and here we have voltage knob, and here we have current knob. Generally, we should not touch this current, and you have to touch only the voltage. So by adjusting this voltage, you have to set 0.2 voltage here. So you can see here, I'm going to set 0 0.2. See here? 0 point. 0 0.2 volt I said and now I have to turn on this multimeter and we have to find its respective current because voltage we already gave here so no need to worry about this multimeter because already this battery have voltmeter inside so the value of the voltmeter is given here 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 0 0.81 so I am going to give 0 0.2 here I am going to measure its respective current itself what is the value of the current it is exactly 0 0.17 so I am going to take this value I am going to write it here clear and once you find the current you can easily find the resistance okay so now I will just show you the calculator could you please pause so you can see the table we have the current we have the voltage by using this current on voltage we can easily find the resistance by using this formula r which is equal to v over i so i am going to use my calculator i am going to divide my v by i so that means my v value is 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.17 so what should be the value here 1.176 so i am going to write only two digit so i can write 1.18 and likewise, you have to set 4, 0.4. You can just have a look here. I'm going to set 0.4. I set 0.4 here. What is its respective current? It's 0 0.33. So for this 0 0.4 voltage, I got 0 0.31 current. So I'm going to write this value here. So here you can just, you can see here 0 0.4, I got 0 0.31. Now I have to divide this value by this. So 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.31. So I got 1.29. So I'm going to write this. So likewise, you have to change the voltage by 0.2 difference, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1. Once you get the current, you have to use this formula for finding the value of R. Clear? So once you finish this, you have to draw the graph for this. So for what you are going to draw the graph, you can just have a look here, R versus V. So you are going to use these two tables for drawing the graph. So first of all, I will just give the clear information about this part also. After that, I will come for the graph. Or I can do one thing. First of all, I will explain the graph for this. So you have to draw the graph for R versus V. So here we have R, here we have versus. Once you complete the table, you have to take all this value in Y axis you have to take all the v value in the x axis so how you can find the how, how you can draw the graph you have to take your y axis you have to draw the x axis here you have to take the resistance r versus v and the resistance unit is ohm and the voltage unit is v now if you fix the point this is a lower voltage range so for sure you will get a straight line here when you just fix the point, you will get a straight line. Use your ruler to draw the straight line by connecting the points. And in this graph, you should not calculate the slope. The only thing you have to do, you have to extend the line and you have to make the line to touch your y-axis. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to extend the line. So you can see, this is the point where my line touch the y-axis. And this value is nothing but my R0 value. 
so don't forget my dear you should not calculate the slope here you have to only fix the point you have to connect the points with a straight line and please extend the line and you have to make the line to touch your y axis where the line exactly touch your y axis that value is nothing but r not value clear so you have to take your r not value write the value with a unit clear and likewise we have to complete the second table for high voltage range voltage 1 2 4 6 8 10 12 that means high voltage range again you have to use the same thing so here i am going to fill the second table so i have to set one voltage i set one voltage for one voltage what should be the current my dear which is nothing but 0 0.54 so i am going to write here i set one voltage in the power supply i got 0 0.54 now how to find the resistance same formula 1 divided by 0 0.54 I got 1.85 so I am going to write 1.85 and second value is 2 I have to set 2 here to here for 2 voltage what should be the value 0 0.72 so likewise you have to use your calculator 2 divided by 0 0.72 I got 2.77 2.78 because I have to round the value my dear the most important thing you can just have a look of the bulb when you give low voltage this bulb will not glow but here you can see I gave the voltage in terms of 1 so before when you give 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.6 the bulb will not glow you can just have a look here here I gave for example, if you give the low voltage range, the bulb will not glow. There is no light. But when you come for the second table, when you come for the second table, when you increase the voltage in the higher level, the bulb will start to glow. You can just have a look here. I am going to give two voltage. I give two voltage. You can see the bulb is glowing now. It starts to glow. When you give for higher voltage, what will happen? The bulb will be very bright. So that means what you understand from here, whatever the voltage you are going to give, the resistance of the filament will be different. Based on this resistance, temperature will be created inside. Whenever the temp resistance will be more, the temperature inside the bulb will be more. Likewise, what you have to do, again, you have to draw the second graph, R versus V. You have to take this value in Y axis. You have to take this value in the X axis you have to draw the graph again for the second table you have to take r value and the unit for the r is omega and the voltage unit is v and in the second table when you just draw the point when you fix the point you will not get a straight line so you will get the curved line you will get a curved line like this You will get a curved line like this. So what do you have to do? You have to connect these points with a smooth curve. You should not use your ruler. You have to connect the points with a smooth curve. And what you have to do? You have to take the last point and you have to connect this last point to the y-axis. And this value is nothing but your R value. Clear? So from the first graph, you got the R0 value. From the second graph you got the R value. So once you got R0 and R, you can easily find the value of the temperature. So now what I am going to do, I am going to explain the equation. So I already told you we are going to use this equation for finding the value of T. So what I am going to do, I am going to write the equation again. You can just see, see here. R minus R0 which is equal to alpha R0 T minus T0. And the most important thing, we are going to find the value of T. So this room temperature T0 will be given by your teacher, maybe 24 degrees Celsius or 20 degrees Celsius. What temperature will be in the room? This temperature value will be given by your teacher. And R0 value, you will get from the first graph. R0 value, you will get from the first graph. R value, you will get from the second graph. And once you substitute the value, you have to find the answer. Now, the most important thing, I just show you the bulb filament. Am I right? 
and this bulb filament is made up of tungsten material and what should be the alpha value for tungsten the alpha value for the tungsten is given in your paper you can just see your paper here the alpha value for the tungsten is given as 4.5 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 3 per kelvin so the value is already given now you can see you have t naught value your teacher will give this value r naught and r value you will get from the graph and alpha value for the tungsten is given as 4.5 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 3 now when you substitute all these things you can easily find so you have to rearrange this formula in terms of t so how you can rearrange you can just have a look here i'm going to keep this term here i'm going to move this alpha or not to the left hand side of the denominator so t minus t naught which is equal to r minus r naught divided by alpha r naught now we are going to find the t i'm going to move this minus t to the right hand side by the time it becomes plus t so my final equation becomes r minus r naught over alpha r naught plus t naught substitute the value of r from the second graph substitute the value of r naught from the first graph alpha value is already given t naught your teacher will give the value once you substitute the value you will get the operating temperature that is your final answer understand so we have to find what is our operating temperature so my dear this is the procedure for this experiment experiment of 5 temperature depends of the resistance that's it thank you